I'm Dan Robbins. I'm the principal here at EC3. Uh, I do want to introduce a few folks around the room just so you can put some faces with some names. Um, in the back, uh, in, the, in the Navy pullover there, that's Kyle Coomer. That is our assistant principal here. Uh, Miss Christy Wright, right here in the gray sweatshirt, that, that she is our guidance counselor here at EC3. The nice thing about coming to our program is our students have uh, two counselors now. So you get your home high school that's always going to be available to you, but you also have Christy Wright. All right, so um, right next to her, right here, Lauren Sims is our dual credit coordinator from ECTC. So she is our number one contact from the college for you all, but we just ask that you come through us first before you bug her. She's gonna always help you, but come through us first before you, before you get to her, okay? And then Ms. Laura Alford, Alford is our, one of our co-leads for our academy program. She's actually our math teacher here in the program. Um, and then we, we have one more person. She's not here this evening, Ms. Kristen Dow. She's our other co-lead for this program. She's our English teacher within the program. If you have not already done so, I will, I will leave this QR code up on this other screen. Um, I want you to scan that in. This is kind of the little bit of the document that I'm going to go over today um, and just review. And uh, I know there are some people in this room uh, that uh, are still waiting to be accepted. You're waiting for an email from me um, and so on. And I'll just tell you that I send those out on, on a week-to-week -week basis. And um, I cannot wait to send your student that email, but there are some things that have to happen first. Um, and that the biggest thing is those benchmark scores. We have to have benchmark scores from the ACT, from your student, so that we can accept them into the program. And um, I'll review those scores one more time, but everyone should know them. They are three scores. It is the, you need the English score of an 18. You need the math score of a 22. You need the reading score of a 20. Now that is just from the ACT, I will go over a little later um, about some other opportunities that you can test on um, to get those scores. Now, I'll be honest, we've blamed COVID for about everything uh, at this point, so we'll, we'll blame one more thing. The ACT, at this point, was supposed to be set up to where you were going to be able to take just one test at a time if you wanted. So if you just needed a math score, you could sign up and take the computer base and take a math score. Well, the ACT has not caught up to that yet, and they're blaming COVID, so thus we are as well. But we do have a way for you to still get those benchmark scores if you need them. For those of you that have already received the scores, and if you're waiting, to, you're wondering where your email is for me, I would say check your email. That's first and foremost. Whatever email that you applied to the program with and whatever email that our Google form captured we send notification to that email, okay? So please be sure that you are checking that email. If you have received benchmark scores and you still have not received an email from me, then my question is, have you uploaded them? So there is an email that I sent out back in January requesting to upload scores once you receive them. And um, I just sent out a couple more, actually, oh, where's Caden at, today? Was that today? Okay. So I sent out, today, some more acceptance for people that had uploaded scores. So I try to do that by every Thursday. And uh, so if you get new scores, please submit those in that model. So kind of moving into this now. So what do you do once you are accepted? Once you are accepted from this program, a couple of things I'm going to need you to do. And the very first is that you must apply to be a student at ECTC for the summer 2022 session. Everyone's probably saying, why summer? Because there is a summer class that all students in this academy program will take. Okay, that's why. So you must apply for the summer. If you have already previously been a dual credit student at ECTC, you still must apply for the summer. And I'll talk about that class a little bit later, but that is the first thing. You, once you apply, you're probably going to get some mass-generated emails from ECTC telling you to submit your ACT scores and transcripts and all that good stuff. And I'm just going to tell you, not that I want you to ever not pay attention to emails that you get from them, but in this regard, do not worry about it. We take care of every bit of that with Ms. Sims. We send all of that for you because you're in this program. That doesn't necessarily happen for everyone else, but in our program, we take care of it. We will sign you up for all of your fall courses. 
we take care of all of that as well. So again, from this point forward, you're under our wing and we will guide you through this. How will you know what needs to be done? By signing up for our Remind group. We will transition away from the email communication into our Remind group slowly but surely. So we need to have people start doing that. That Remind group is now active. I recommend that you join it once you are accepted. Okay, you join it once you're accepted. There's no reason for you to join it until you're accepted because, I mean, just, we don't know. I mean, what happens if you never get accepted? Then you may be part of that group and then you, we send out lots of messages. So I don't want to then inadvertently send you messages that you don't want to receive. I will recommend that using the app is the best method. Okay, not just by using a text message because then you might get your remind groups mixed up with your um, home high school teacher or even that group, um, your junior class or, and so on. So use the Remind group, uh, app to stay connected a little better, all right? And again, we will send out that Remind group in the email once you are accepted. So um, if, you, if you feel like that you missed that later on. Let me see. I wanna go over just a little bit about some of the courses that your student will take while in the program. The state of Kentucky requires that students take certain courses during certain years. And uh, the junior year, it, you are, you're not foreign to some of the courses. Obviously, everyone has to take an English and a math. And that's going to be your English 101 and your MAT 150. Those are English and college algebra. Some of you, I know there are always some, where you all are getting more and more advanced as you come along. There may be some of you as high school sophomores right now that are already taking the college algebra. And that's fine. If you are, then we will go ahead and put you into the next class, which will be Trig, uh, Math 155. So we'll, we'll work that out with each individual schedule. But most all students, about 95% of all students, end up in, in Math 150. Some other courses that you'll end up taking in this program, not necessarily required by the state of Kentucky, but in our program, Sociology, Psychology, History 109 is U.S. History. All juniors in the state of Kentucky are required to take United States History. That is your U.S. History credit that you'll take. Then we have a COM 181, and we've actually added a second option. There's COM 181, which is public speaking, and then there's COM 252, which is interpersonal communications. So you can choose, students will get an option to choose which one they want. If uh, they don't pick one, then we'll place one for them, and the, by default, most students end up in public speaking, COM 181. What's the big difference? One, you're going to give speeches. Okay, um, one is required for certain career paths, um, being public speaking. That's more widely recognized versus the interpersonal. So if you're in doubt, you would want to choose that class. The next is Humanities 120. Uh, we used to do an art or a music class, and we've kind of shifted gears just a little bit, and we're doing a humanities class that actually covers um, the arts, the music, the drama, and so on, and this covers your arts and humanities requirement for high school graduation. Now we know that some students right now may already be in an arts and humanities course, but we have three different high schools and three different high schools with three different rules regarding to arts and humanities. Some take an art class for a year, some take choir and so on. And so just within this program again, the humanities credit is required for your degree. So we take this and it does also double up to take care of that requirement for high school graduation. Uh, the next we have is your science in a lab. Junior year, you need to take a science class. So we allow our students to choose the science class that they want in this. Again, that is a little bit tied to potentially a career option that you may want to go into. Um, the first, Bio 112, 113 is a, is a basic biology level course. Um, this can pretty much get you through most degree paths. Uh, the next one is anatomy. So students that are looking to go potentially into the medical field and nursing and so on that you, you need anatomy. This is an intro level anatomy. I tell everyone this is intro level anatomy. The one that you need and you must have for a lot of the, these degree paths are the next level. It's bio 137 and 139. We start off with Bio 135 because 
there is a national failure rate for anatomy of 50%. Okay, we have changed the curve of that national failure rate for anatomy of 137 within our academy program because of our successful completion of 135. So we use this as the precursor to that to help our students be successful in 137. I'm not gonna tell you that just because you take this class that you're gonna ace 137 or 139, I'm not. It just de it definitely helps prepare you that maybe you won't be part of that statistic. Chem 140, uh, this is our, uh, our more upper level chemistry uh, for students that may be looking into other STEM careers that chemistry would be required. Upper level chemistry such as Chem 170 and Chem 180, those are the next two levels of Chem, chem 1, General College Chemistry 1 and 2. Um, what we again, we start off with the entry level Chem 140 to help our students be more successful. And then the next course is Chem 120. This is like uh, entry level chemistry. I hate science, but I'll, I'll do chemistry over biology kind of thing. And so uh, again, students have to complete a science course their junior year. So they get the choice of these, these four that they'll pick from. And we'll ask them this later for them to give us some information. Uh, some additional courses, um, again, informational. Typically in our program, again, state of Kentucky rules, you must have English every single year. Typically in our program, our students will take one, 101 for English their junior year, and they'll do 102 their senior year. We do have some students that choose to do 101 and 102 their junior year, and then their senior year, they'll take English 161. Again, they have to have English anyway, so they get to pick how they want to track that within their English pathway. Then the next two are the other two uh, algebra or trig class and the statistics class, the other two math classes that we offer here at ECT, or EC3. If they need something above that, they can go to the college at ECTC to take um, a brief calculus or a Calc 1, Calc 2, and so on. They can choose to do that once they're ready for it. Um, and we do get students that are ready for that sooner than later, and so we, we work with individual students. These are just the courses that we're able to teach, at least in our building, and again, Ms. Alford teaches both of those. Then I like to throw in a couple extras just for knowledge base. Some free, everyone likes the word free, free work-ready classes, and I'll talk about work-ready in a little bit uh, more detail later. The first is digital literacy. How many students in here already took CIT 105 at high school? Already took it or, or taken it? A couple of you? Okay, usually a little more than that. Okay, some of you, you may have took it, you don't even know, right? It was a CIT 105, it was a dual credit, it was free, your home high school teacher probably taught it. It was Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, all that, okay? Hopefully you did take it and hopefully you did do the paperwork for dual credit, okay? Because it's required to get your associate's degree from ECTC. So if you took it and didn't get dual credit, you can take it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just the messenger, okay? So, the next one is the NFS 101. Again, another free class. It's pretty popular amongst our students in the health sciences careers, nursing. It's a required course. Again, it's a free class that students take. And then the, the bottom one that I have listed here is BAS 120. BAS 120 is our personal finance class. It is uh, the rule now in the state of Kentucky that our students are gonna be exposed to personal finance before graduating high school. So we put it into our program, so our students take this as well. We have a lot of our juniors that are taking it right now, and uh, this class um, is a very good class. I, I really like it, uh, working with our kids on it, because as you all as parents know, and, and myself, is our kids are dumb when it comes to money. And so uh, we can do all the things we want to do at home with them, but they, they, they have to kind of learn it themselves a lot of times. So, um, but this is, this is a great class, and again, very glad that the state of Kentucky um, says that they have to take it anyway. So free class, so they'll take that as well. Let me talk a little bit more about the summer FYE class. You all have, a, have had enough time to stew over this and thinking, wow, what are we getting into? So FYE stands for first year experience. First year experience. It is a class, again, that's required by ECTC to graduate with your associate's degree. It is a class that is very beneficial to our students to help them prepare for what they're gonna face in their college classes. Not necessarily the content that they're gonna face, but the mode for which their instruction will take place. 
how they have to learn to submit assignments, how they have to learn to complete discussion board things on Blackboard, how they learn to communicate with teachers, how they learn about resources that are available to them on campus, resources available to them off campus, and so on. And so this class is very beneficial in that regard. And because of that, it does help our students to succeed in our program. It is a great mark of measure for us to see how well our students are prepared and dedicated for this program that will be very rigorous for them. So we have them take this online summer class. It is online. It takes uh, eight weeks. It is an eight-week session that you have to complete it. The class, once you start it, is wide open. So if a student wanted to work on it multiple hours during a day and multiple hours for several weeks back to back, they could potentially finish the course before the eight weeks is over. That's, so it's not a bad thing. So if someone says, I got to finish this, I got to get done, I got too much other stuff going on, I want to get it done, you know, go for it. It's perfectly fine. We, we, are, we are good if you choose to do that um, as long as you do complete it and you do well on it. Our, the percentage of students, as far as grades go in this class, this is, a, this is a very good guess for me, but at least within our program, we probably have somewhere between 90 to 92 percent of students get A's in this class. There's probably somewhere about 4 percent or so that get B's, and then the rest are C's or not good, okay? Um, and to be honest, we have deep conversations with any student that gets a C in this class. It just shouldn't happen. I mean, it's, it pretty much probably came down to the student stopped doing it, didn't turn things in on time, didn't meet deadlines, blew off an assignment or two. I don't, I don't know. But we have those conversations because we just want to really make sure that if you're ready for this program, this is just one class that you're having to do during the summer when nothing else, in a sense, academically is going on. And if you can't do this, maybe this program isn't for you. And that's okay. Let's find that out early before your parents invest all this money in this program and you invest your time and so on. And you know, again, everything we do, it goes on your permanent college record. It's not only on your high school transcript, it's your permanent college record forever. So we don't want to mess up, okay? So, but the summer class, someone's like, I go on vacation for two weeks. Great. You don't want to do any work during vacation? Don't do any. Don't do any. You probably want to make sure that you feel good about where you're at before vacation comes on, or you're going to take a laptop with you on vacation and do some work. It's your choice. But the deadlines will come, and they will pass, regardless if you're at the beach or not. So just, and you'll know ahead of time when it, when it is. But this will start after we're out for the summer, and we will have a, a, a Zoom or a Google Meet to talk about this. We may bring you back in, but I, again, I know your all's time is precious, but we'll make sure we go over this, and I'll, we will introduce you to those FYE professors so they can talk a little bit more about uh, the, the, the parameters of the class. But it, in the realms of it, it is an easy class. The class does cost money though, and, I, and I, I have to put this out there, the class does cost money. And I'll get into a little bit about tuition, so you, it'll make a little bit more sense later, but the cost of this class works out to be somewhere around 400, some, somewhere, some dollars for this class. Now I tell you all this now because uh, a typical three college credit hour class at ECTC is more along the lines of about $180. But this class only gets discounted so much from ECTC, um, and, and it's just that's just where it is. Again, because it's the FYE class, uh, colleges such as four-year institutions like WKU or or even like Campbellsville or, or U of L, this FYE class would not be a transferable class to them because they have their own class that they have you do. So because it doesn't fall into that realms of this transferability type thing then this is why the state of Kentucky doesn't put that it has to be discounted like the other ones do. If you don't want to take this class, you don't have to take this class. 
you will have to do something for us and we do have a, an online apex type thing that's college and career readiness that we have students that do 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 that they cho choose to do instead um, but it's not it will never get you to your associate's degree and for a lot of students that's why they want this program they want the associates they want the associates. I don't care what happens. I want to graduate high school, and I'm, they're going to call my name, and they're going to say, I, I have my associate's degree as well. Well, then you have to do FYE. That's the way it works. Okay? 16-week classes versus 8-week classes. Oops, I apologize. Traditional college schedule, the one that we were all used to, 16-week semester. You start in August. It ends in December. It's traditional. There are still those courses at ECTC. All of the courses that we offer in our building by live professors will all be 16 week. Some of those courses that I talked about there at the end, like that personal finance or maybe nutrition and some of those other things, those could be eight week courses. So what's the difference? Well, it starts in August, but it ends, like for right now, we're, we're in uh, this spring term, they just had an eight week session end and then the next eight week session starts Monday. So it's, it's the same content, it's just packed into eight weeks. So good and bad that go along with it. Um, some students then during an eight week session may take two to three classes during an eight week and that's it. And then that's all they have to focus on versus four to five. And then the next eight weeks they do another two to three instead of four to five, does that make sense? And so it is, a, it is a, a nice model for that. The college has revisited this some in some capacity with some classes and they have found that some courses just don't work very well in eight week and they need to be 16 week. And so they've made adjustments. They're learning through this process too, um, but we do appreciate the partnership with them. So I just wanna make sure that you understand that our courses in this building during your junior year will all be 16 week, but your students could have an eight week class maybe one of those online classes, or it could be one of those science classes with the lab because we don't, those classes are not taught in our building. Those classes are taught at the college campus. And so our students will walk over a lot of times. Once our students are able to drive, they drive over, but they will take those during the week that they are here. And we work it out on their schedule as well, okay? Course syllabus. Um, wanna make sure that everyone understands the course syllabus is, is your contract, it's your student's contract with their professor. The student will do this, the student will do this, the student is responsible for this, the professor will do this, so on. It is, it is the course contract between student and teacher. It is what the student should follow and, and refer back to and any questions that they have about the course, how am I getting graded, when is this due, how do I talk to if I have a problem, all of that is in this course syllabus. So I want to make sure that you as a parent, when they start their classes, one of the things, you know, you all always get all these papers, right? They get sent home at the start of the school year and sign this and do this. You may want to ask, hey, let me see your syllabus. Your parent, as a parent, you probably want to help your student just to kind of get their mind wrapped around the workload that they're going to have for that course. And by you seeing that course syllabus, you're going to get an idea of it. So this is, this is the initial way that you help stay connected with your student into their coursework because as I get into the next part, grades, how many parents in here, who, who, who's not afraid to say that I check my child's grades weekly? Anybody? Daily. 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 We got some dailies. Okay. Weekly, daily. Yeah. So students, raise your hand if you like that. I was, no, I see. Right. But anyway, right? So, parents, hold on to your seat. You will not know your child's grade anymore. So, how will you know how well your child is doing? How do you know? They need to pull up their computer and they show you their grade book and blackboard so that you are informed. Okay? That's, that's how you have that discussion. My child, I've had a child come through this program, we've done it. I have a child in this program right now, we do it. I have a child that's at Western, we have this talk now. 
So she hates it, but I'm still dad. So too bad, you know, I'm paying the bill. So you have to have that conversation. You need to be open about it. Um, so students, from your side of things, this is not a way for you to keep everything secret. This is a way for you to start taking responsibility for your grades and your coursework. And when you need assistance and you need help, that you ask early and often so that you get assistance. Your parents will still be able to help you. You talk to us. We do grade checks. We will do three a semester. Three grade checks. That's more than the progress reports that you're getting now. OK? Just, just to let you know that during trimester, you, you don't get that many. We will do three. However, we will only inform you if there is a problem. And we have a paper that we fill out. The student signs it. They bring it home. You sign it. They bring it back. That's how we will do it. So if you're wondering, and you've looked, and you think, well, I think the grades look good, and then you never get anything from us, then things are jiving. We're good. So what's good? Good for me may not be good for you. Good for it in our pro A's, B's, and C's. You will not get anything home. If it is a D or an F, you will get something. I, I get it. You probably don't feel like you can wait until there's a, a C right, or a D. You're like, it's too late. Again, I encourage you to have these open conversations and often at home. And if you want to set a rule at home every two weeks that they show you their grades, fine. That's great. That's great. But this is what we do in our program. So just understand that. Infinite Campus is there, and you will see something, but there's no active grades there, for, unless they're in a traditional home high school course or maybe even a course here at EC3. All right? Next thing, textbooks. Sorry, I think he's wanting to jump on me. All right, so textbooks. Textbooks are not totally gone yet, but we've progressed more and more to this digital type textbook. If your student requires a physical textbook for their courses here in this program for the next two years, their junior and senior year, we provide it. The district picks up the cost for those textbooks and we will provide that book to the students. We have a process for that where the student has to request a textbook and so on. And for those of you all that remember college, you had to go to the bookstore to find out what book you needed and so on. It's kind of that modified version of that. They have to figure out what book they need and they have to request it. So that's what we do. We put it on the student still to request the textbook. And if there's a physical book, we get it for them. They pick it up from us, they turn it back in at the end of the semester. If your child requires a digital textbook or there's digital content or an access code, we do not pick those up, okay? Because there's no way for the district to recover that once it's used. So I just wanna make sure that you understand that. We pick up physical textbooks, digital textbooks or digital content will be placed on your bill for your student. Average cost for digital content, I've just through the years, somewhere between $50 to $85 in most cases. How many of your classes will that, will that be on? I can't tell you that. I don't know. I don't know. Those aren't discounted, though. That's just that's the price. The, the, the dual credit agreement with the colleges, your tuition is discounted to 40%, but not digital content or books. Okay. Technology, always the big question. As you all are experiencing now, your students have been given access to Chromebooks, they're bringing those home daily and so on. That will continue here. We have Chromebooks and we have laptops. Our laptops are eight years old. They still function, they work, but they're eight-year-old laptops. So we all know how that is. We have started to replace all of those with Chromebooks, and so those are available to our students. This seems to be about the time when students use this to their advantage and then they ask you, for Santa to bring the MacBook, okay? I wanna make sure you all are perfectly clear on this. Your student does not require that. We have that here. We are providing that to your student. So if you choose to do that, just reminder, you didn't hear that from me, okay? So we will provide the technology that they need to be successful in their college classes and so on. 
But if you wanted to purchase something, then you can uh, personally own devices. We do have a lot of students that do carry those around daily. It gets, it gets us into tuition costs, as I've kind of talked just briefly about. Lauren, has the cost changed, or do you know if there's any cost adjustment yet? Sure. So Laura's talking about obviously, you know, the they're in session in Lexington right now in Frankfurt, and they're they're talking about different things and funding. So if you ever get to bend, you know, a state rep or legislator, any of their their ears, you want to continue to encourage to fund, you know, education in the in the format that we don't want to continue to raise tuition for students. Uh, a few moons ago, it used to be one third of the tuition. Then it went to 40%. There are talks out there that it may go to 50% of the tuition rate. Okay? It's still a deal. It's still a great deal, because I know, because I have my junior that I have this bill, and then I have my student at Western, and I have her bill. It's still a great deal, and I'll take it all day long. But just understand that they may raise it. So right now, today, it's like 7160, I think I'm somewhere close to that, a credit hour. So when you start putting your calculator to it, your student will take like 15 college credit hours a semester. Okay, so you start putting that math to work on what the cost of the program is. Um, normal rate being somewhere around 179 a semester right now. Okay. Again, as we know new things about tuition, we'll be sure to share those out. Always a big topic, and I know that you may ask again later, and it's perfectly fine, please ask. You can pay online, you can pay in person, you can pay by phone, but I will send you a message when it is time to pay. Do not pay before you hear from me. <coughs> Store the money under a mattress, put it in somewhere that's gonna earn money for you, it doesn't matter, but do not pay yet. Because if you pay too early and you pay too much, ECTC will hold on to your money until later and then they'll refund you. So there's no interest in that, so I just, smart money. Don't, just hold on to it, okay, until it is time to pay. But once you hear from me it's time to pay, please do not hesitate in doing so and take care of it because if you don't, especially in that fall bill, it could hinder us in your student schedule for the spring due to a financial hold, okay? So typically, again, you know, Lauren and her team work diligently, and, but they're a small team, but every bill has to be hand-touched to be discounted for the dual credit rate, and then they have to apply certain scholarships and so on, so it, it's, it's just a timely process. So again, I think this past year, somewhere around October, it, it was ready, so um, we're not ready for spring bills yet. I'll just go ahead and tell you, this is March, so just, so just kind of uh, putting the context together, okay? Scholarships, everyone likes to talk about scholarships. So in this program, and really throughout the state of Kentucky, every high school student gets two free college classes through KIA, and KIA is the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority. It's where your student's keys money comes from. It's not the same as this, but Kia does provide two free classes for general college classes to your student to use during their junior and senior year. And so you can choose when you want to use those for your student. We have a discussion about it typically. Um, we always recommend that you use it on the most expensive classes. So your science classes with the lab because it's connected, that's gonna be four college credit hours or more. So that's when you want to use those scholarships. You don't want to use it on a three college credit hour if later on you have a five. I mean, let's just, again, they want to raise prices. We want to try to use it to the best financial ability. So be smart with that. So use that. Work ready. As I talked a little bit about that digital literacy, the nutrition, the personal finance, those fall underneath this category called work ready. They are considered career and technical education courses. There are several that are offered. But students get two of those a year free, starting in their freshman year. They actually are allowed to take two per year during the fall or spring semester 
only. And that's the other caveat to this and when scholarships are allowed to be used, only during the fall and spring semester. It's another thing potentially to talk to your legislators about for them to free up some of these scholarships to potentially be used in the summer. Here comes another big one. If your student is eligible for free and or reduced lunch through Hardin County Schools, then Hardin County Schools picks up your tuition bill. Okay. Again, it's phenomenal. This is, this is where we level the playing field, that this program does not eliminate someone due to financial hardship in any manner. So this is there, and it's phenomenal. I don't know if anybody else is doing anything like this. So if you ever get an opportunity to talk to a board member, say thank you. This is, this is phenomenal. Obviously, just like anything else, there are always stipulations to it. To be in this program, you must maintain a 3.0 GPA. We do have students at times that fall below that 3.0 GPA, but we work with them in an academic probation stance and we help them to stay eligible. If you fall below a 3.0 and you're on this tuition assistance, you lose tuition assistance. Okay? And you must then get back above the 3.0 to gain, to get back on it. And you must remain eligible each year for this. Okay, so letters will go out later um, towards the end of the school year for those students' eligibility. Obviously, the big thing is, is if, this, if you are in this category, just be sure that you always fill out your application. I know this, these past two school years have been weird because lunch has been free for everyone, and so some people have thought, well, I don't need to fill that out. Well, if you did not fill it out, please do so now still so that we can make sure that you're on this list. Um, the Board of Education picks up the cost of that FYE class this summer for those students as well. Okay, so it's important to make sure that that paperwork is up to standard. All right, so again, as I just talked about that 3.0 GPA, it's a big deal for us. We do have to have conversations with some students regarding this. We average a 3.75 GPA in this academy program. I'm talking about after grades are done not before coming in. Freshman, the, the freshman GPA in college is not a 3.75. I promise you, it's much lower than that. Probably almost a full point lower. Our students excel. We know, you all are phenomenal students, you excel. So you continue to excel in this program as well. And so when we think about it in comparison to other like first year college going students and so on, we are at the top of the game. So um, we push them, we support them, we help them, but that it is you know, a big deal for us. Attendance, always a big question about attendance. When your junior year for this entire program, you are required to be here at EC3 when Hardin County Schools is in session. Hardin County Schools in session, you're here. For instance, I just said, mentioned a minute ago about the eight week session and how ECTC just had spring break. This week, right now, is ECTC spring break. Our students, as they are dual credit students, still had to be here at school. Junior year. Junior year. They follow the Hardin County Schools calendar for all breaks. Our professors that come to our building follow the Hardin County Schools calendar per breaks, snow days, so on. They follow it all. Senior year, our students in this program, their majority classes, they're on campus at ECTC, so they follow the ECTC calendar. Do you all remember not too long ago when there was a, a, a public relations release regarding the, the correlation between E-Town City Schools, Hardin County Schools, and ECTC? So that was part of this, is where they tried to link up to get calendars the same. It won't be for next school year, it will be for the next, but they're trying to link up to keep us all on the same page because it, we have so many dual credit students. We serve over 200 students here at EC3 in this program. That's between our juniors and seniors. And so you just got to think about the amount of students that affects, not, you know, not only the amount of students that are taking dual credit at their home high school, so there's a lot of connecting parts. So we're trying to get everything aligned, but just remember, as far as attendance goes, your student should be in school every single day, Monday through Friday, when Hardin County Schools is in session 
next year, their junior year, okay? And again, regardless if they have classes or not, because there are times that our college professors cancel a class. They cancel an in-person class. They, they may have something that comes up. Their life happens with them too. There's no substitute for a college professor, okay? So that class may get canceled, but that doesn't mean that your student can just sleep in and say, I'll show up at 1030. They can't do that. They have to still come regular time and then they just go to one of their study rooms and they just use the extra study time. All right, so make sure of that. The next one I like to always hit on, it's not typically an issue whatsoever within our program, but we've got to point it out. And that's behavior issues, okay? Most of our students apply to this program. When I go to their attendance and behavior record, we see great attendance and we see very minimal behavior issues. We have had occasions in the past where a student's been accepted into this program and then they have a major behavior infraction prior to the start of it. That major behavior infraction removes them from this program. Double jeopardy, yes, it happens. A student cannot participate in this program if they go to College View. And, and students understand what happened, how you go to College View? That's from a, a drug or alcohol infraction, okay? Little uh, public service announcement, little PSA here. If you're a vapor students, you better get it out of your system, okay? The amount of students we've busted as of lately in the district connected to a vape that actually has a synthetic marijuana in it is crazy. You all know, talk to your friends, you know. So it's, they're getting busted and then they're gone. It's, it's zero tolerance for that. So if that happens to you, this program is gone for you, okay? Again, our program is successful because we can trust our students to do what they're supposed to do. Very, very plainly said that the supervision that happens in this program, I don't want to sit there and say that no one knows, it, there's, it's less. We don't have to monitor them as close as we would in a regular classroom because they're expected to do the things that they're expected to do. So if we can't trust you, then we, we can't have you in the program. So it's very important that we do not have any major behavior infractions from our students, okay? FERPA, I want to talk about FERPA because it always pops up. Um, you as a parent are still just kind of I spoke of as myself as a parent, you're, you're a parent, you're in charge of your household, do everything. But when it comes to your student's education within ECTC, please do not violate their educational rights by doing something that would be unheard of like you logging in as your student and accessing their coursework or grades without them knowing. That would actually be illegal. You can say all you want, you pay the bills, you bought the computer, whatever. I don't mess with the law, okay? So, FERPA is there. You all have access through me to their professors, okay? Through me to the professors, you have a direct line and I can work with you if any communication needs to take place. You have direct access anytime you need to, to Ms. Alford and Ms. Dow. They are Hardin County Schools employees. We work differently, okay? You can just always talk to them like, like as a normal parent would if you have any questions. But when it comes to your student's college professor, the college professor will not talk to you and does not have to talk to you if you were to email them on your student's behalf, okay? Most are not gonna just blow you off or whatever, but just understand that if you have a concern whatsoever, my thing is that please reach out, let us help you. Or just assist your student in typing up a great email to communicate what needs to be communicated to your professor. Do that and help your student through it, okay? Just don't wanna violate anything with FERPA. But there is a consent, there is a way to grant access in the student center and I will go over that later once the students get into their stuff with ECTC. Um, some other good stuff, breakfast and lunch, always served here. Students can get to us in the morning, first thing in the morning, breakfast is served, lunch is served until noon every day. 
Student transportation, I didn't list this on here, but student transportation continues to occur. Hardin County School buses roll in and out of here every single day. So students do not have to be dropped off here, do not have to already drive. The bus can bring them. You can, as a parent, until your student starts driving, you can drop them off here at the beginning of the day and pick them up at the end if you want to. But Hardin County Schools transportation will always be provided to your student um, during this next year as a junior. During the senior year, it becomes a little more difficult because, again, like I said, your student may not be here, but they may be over there. The bus will get them here, and then there's a path that we have cut out through the trees over here, and there's actually a, a path that will be designed and laid out soon. But then the students walk over to campus a lot of times, um, especially when the weather's nice, they get out and they can do that. So that is available, but transportation is always provided. Study areas, I like to always provide this to students so that they understand that we assign study rooms, especially for our students during fourth and fifth period. And I make mention of fourth and fifth period because the majority of your classes within this program will occur in the morning and end at 1145. Okay, and then your afternoon, you have a lunch time, and then your afternoon time when it's typically fourth and fifth period, that's when some of our students choose to go back to their home high school to take uh, elective courses there. Maybe they want to, they're in band or choir or ROTC, they're in those courses, so we encourage them to go back for that. Some students just want to be back at their home high school at the end of the day, maybe just to help in a peer tutoring sense. You know, again, your home high school wants to hold on to you as, long, as much as possible because you all are phenomenal students. So there's also opportunities for you there, so don't lose that connective, connective piece to it. Some want to be back there at the home high school because then you have athletics after and it's just easier to go ahead and be there, and that makes sense too. But you can choose to stay here fourth and fifth period, either in a pathway course, one of our pathway courses, we have several students that choose to do that, or there's some students choose to stay in a study hall, okay? And so we send them to these designated study areas for them to work on the work for their classes. Um, if you do so, then a majority of you should end at the end of the day when you walk out, not have homework, okay? And uh, a lot of our student athletes have spoke how much they really enjoy it because when they get home at 10 o'clock at night, that they don't have homework to do because they've already worked on it during the school day. So again, choice in that. Yes, Ms. Brown. They could do fourth, then go back fifth, if they drive, okay. if they drive. The reason it's, it's blocked together is our buses transport here at the beginning of fourth, and then they transport back at the end of fifth. So once they're driving, we do have some students that do that. They go back for like a fifth period foreign language or something like that. Once they're driving, then all kinds of things open up. So um, I, don't, I don't know if we've had it ever in a case where maybe a parent has picked up every day and took them back. Um, that would be pretty heavy on a parent to do, but... Obviously, we would consider whatever we needed to consider for personal cases, so, all right. The next item on here, before we kind of get into some of the testing things, is just our community service, um, research-based. Uh, our community supports a lot of the things that we do here at EC3, and so we want to help our students continue to be productive members of society. This is, this is kind of a twofold thing. Our students that are applying for scholarships, those of you all that have had seniors or to graduate and so on, scholarship applications always want to know what have you done besides being a great student and a great athlete and a great, what, what else have you done? What else? It's always. Community service is huge. It's big. So we foster that and we want to help our students find some outreach, something that they can be involved in, something they're passionate about. And they use this time, especially, I say this all the time, so in December, they finish up their ECT coursework, sometimes around, again, I'll throw a date, something like December 7th, okay? We're still in school till the 18th. So you have, you know, a, a good week and a half in there when they're done with classes. And so, love them to death, but I don't want to babysit them either. So when they can go out and do community service or they do some job shadowing, um, things like that, that's great for them, it's great for us. So we try to help promote that. We wanna get them out in the community. Again, those are gonna be things that are gonna help build their college application resumes down the road. 
So we help and we'll, more information will come to our students as we get into that. Um, in the start of the school year next year, we talk about it a little bit more and let them find some, some projects for themselves. All right. All right, the next bit that I have on here just deals with ECTC testing. So for those of you that are still waiting and needing scores because you might be missing just English or maybe just missing reading or maybe it's just the elusive math that you still need, you can take a test at the ECTC Assessment Center. So um, I'll talk in just a minute. We'll get down here about what the test you can take. This is the contact information. So you can email them. You can call them, but you need to set up an appointment if your student needs to take an assessment to get into our program. Once they take that assessment, we need those scores. Do not think the ECTC is going to send those to us because they will not. But your student will walk out and know if they got the benchmark that they needed. Okay, so um, to do that, your student must have a KCTCS ID number. So how do they get that? Well, if they've ever taken a dual credit class, such as that CIT class that I mentioned earlier, some of you have taken um, the med term class here at EC3, you probably already have a KCTC ID number. You need to know that number and you need a photo ID, okay? And then you can call and set up an appointment and you can go. There are three tests that you can take. So for the, um, let's see, for the uh, English section, it's one, which one is it's English section, they do the writing. They can do the AccuPlacer writing test. They changed the test on me. I found out today, I apologize. It used to be a tape test. So the AccuPlacer writing, and this link is active. So those of you all with the QR code, you can click this link. You can get some, some practice on that. So I would always suggest maybe doing that before blindly going in and taking the test. The next one is for Coyote Algebra. And again, the students must have a college algebra score. And you can click that link and that'll take you into like, I think there's four different practice tests. And then um, they do Coyote Reading. Now that one, I didn't have any specific resources for it, but anything that you're doing for, versus ACT reading prep, I think will be beneficial. It is a multiple choice test that they give for that. Um, so and then I have a little bit of a link down here that they can take a look at and see. So now this one. This next link right here, and I'm actually going to click on it just to kind of show you all, um, and we're going to be finishing up our session here and open up to questions. This is the ECTC dual credit webpage that you're going to go to. And there's going to be all kinds of resources and everything on here. Again, you may be looking on here and you find that contact and you see Lauren Sims and her team contacts and so on. I just ask that if you have any initial questions, anything going on, please reach out to us first. Lauren and her team feel like they're part of Hardin County Schools, but they don't actually work for us. They work for the college, and they not only just deal with us, they deal with all the other high schools in our region. So if you're asking a question of her, it may not be, she might give you more of a general answer versus the EC3 specific. So start with us, and if I don't have an answer, if I need to reach out to Lauren, then, then we'll do so. But this, this uh, web page provides all kinds of resources for you all and it's just it's loaded with information a lot of the things that I went over in the dual credit basics are there eligibility requirements just I want to make sure that you may look on here and say well ECTC says this they do you're coming to the Academy program so you have to meet our eligibility requirements not just what the college is looking for cost and scholarship and the, as, as that cost changes then th that information gets updated within their web page as well. Uh, dual credit pathways is always kind of cool because people will say, oh, I didn't know that I could actually take other courses, not just pure academic courses. There's other that fall underneath there's work ready scholarship. So there are some other options in there as well. But we focus on the Associates of Arts and the Associates of Science. Those, those are the two that we focus in on in our program. Okay, and so on. And then just, there, there's some orientation that we'll do later we, we run that for our students in this program. So I've talked a lot, and I know some of you have some questions. If you do not have any questions and you want to go, this would be the time to do so. If you have questions, you want to stick around, then uh, again, you won't be rude to me. You can get up anytime you want. I use the two feet rule, so just get up and go if you need to. 
But I do want to open it up for questions because I know that you all have some. And um, so we'll just kind of go around the room. So, yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, every, so the question is about transferability. So within our program, the courses that you take are transferable and will be transferable to any state public college in the state of Kentucky. No questions asked, okay? Yeah, out of state, that's a little bit different. Private colleges, a little bit different. Now I will tell you this, and we just had some parents leave that had some younger kids. I'll tell you that our private schools, Campbellsville, that they've been really good about um, our acceptance rate from our programs because they see a lot of students already coming with us. So it's wise for them to be sure they want to accept them because they don't want to put their students in a tough situation. So, but our, the courses in this program, transferable. Again, once they're on your permanent college record, they're yours and they'll never be taken away from you. But how they help you in that other program where you're transferring always is up to those colleges. But in our four-year public universities in the state of Kentucky, it's seamless. So, yes, yes. When are ACT scores due? Yeah, the question about ACT scores. So ACT scores are due today. And we will, they will continue to be due tomorrow and the next day and after. So as soon as you get them, you want them. So I tell students this all the time. We have 100 seats in this program, 100 seats, okay? We are roughly about half right now, okay, roughly. So what happens? If I accept the 100th student and you are the 101 student, then you are on the outside looking in, okay? So the sooner, the better for scores because I must have scores before I, you can be accepted. So again, I hate to put that pressure, but that is where we are at. This year, right now, we have 92 students in our program. So we didn't meet, re reach the 100. So we did have more than 100 applicants, obviously, but we then had some students that took the test several times and then they got overwhelmed with it and they just said, I'm done. And that's good. I mean, you don't need to wear yourself out for it. So, yes. So, question. No, it's that or the ACT. And the reason I put those others out there is because when you take the ACT, now it's the entire setting. You can't come in and just say, I just want to do math. They, you can't do that. So you've got to take the entire thing. So if you just need a math score, just take the math from ECTC and you can get it. Now, I will say this, and I apologize for those people that left. They're going to miss this information. I, I'm sorry. Your transition coaches at your high school, Central Harden is Ms. Tara Wooden. North Harden is Mr. Justin Kraft, John Harden and Ms. Jennifer Cobb. Those people can allow you to take the Coyote Algebra test at your high school. They, will, they can set you up and do it, okay? The test at the college, the first, is free. After that, if you need to take it again, you must pay. So. Uh, the other thing I have to say is I think there was some confusion about the ACT, right? So my daughter was free. They were like, hey, it has to be done by this certain time, right? Her situation is that, so I think there's a communication gap when it was brief of when it needed to be taken. So she was like, let me just take it. So we scheduled it. I paid for it back in September, August. Because mm -hmm. she was waiting for her ACT prep that she knew that she was going to take second trimester to be done to be able to take it. Okay. So far, no, no, we already took it. So I think there's a communication gap that's getting pushed down. I, I'm, not, no, I'm not sure where that communication gap came. I'm the one that came to the students and I met with them at their home high school. If they weren't in that session, then they might have heard from somebody different. But I told all of our students in the very beginning, I mean, the ACT should be taken early and often. So again, if someone was to ask me when I should take it, I just started Algebra 2, then I would say, unless you're just super gifted in math, I would probably wait until you have a little bit more of that Algebra 2 content. So if a student just took it, you know, when was the last ACT? February. In February, you're fine. April 2nd. So now the next one's April 2nd. The deadline's already passed for signing, signing up for that, but there, it could be some uh, standby. You could sign up for a standby. Um, again, and if you're worried about that, then I would definitely look to this route. We do accept students, and we have numerous students that go this route. So late deadline what? For, for late registration yeah. tomorrow. Thank you. For like the math and the reading of the Coyote. Okay, so for Coyote, we need college algebra 14. We need a 14 on the college algebra 
to get in it. And, and, that, and that is, it's 14 of the 25 questions correct. So there are 25 questions on Coyote Algebra. You must get 14 correct. And then what about the rating? I don't know. Yeah, that's so it's new to me. I do know that they told me on the writing one that you have, because they have to write like a paragraph or something like that, they have to score a five. Now, I don't know what that means, but you have to score a five. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry. That's, I'm, Lauren, do you have any other information regarding those placement tests? Scores for like the AccuPlacer or the Coyote reading or? Yeah. Yeah. That's the take an, an English 101 with a writing. That's the, that's to take a English 101 plus a, a writing lab. We don't do that. We just do English 101. So. Okay. Okay, so after they meet on Tuesday, if there's any updates, I'll make sure that we send that out um, to your students' email addresses and the remind group if anyone's joined it. Yes, sir. So the students that you got on ACT already and they didn't reach the benchmark, but they didn't qualify for the program. When is it that they can take the test? I know the first April is the second, April 12th. What's the deadline? What's the date they can take the ACT? They, they can take it as late as they, again, once we reach 100 students, then we will cut it off. So they could take it all the way up. Again, because they, they can sign up for FYE regardless of having those scores, and we can put them in. But FYE will start in June. So we, for us, it is beneficial to, so we can get them all going and all on the same page by May, really. But they can sign up, and they can be in our FYE class and not be accepted to this program yet and waiting for that July test score, but they could, still, they could already you know, have that FYE taken care of. We did have some students that waited, and they wanted to wait, and it was perfectly fine, and then they didn't take FYE in the summer. They took it in the fall with us. So we did allow that. We had some students move in, brand new. They didn't even have the opportunity, so they took it in the fall with their other cohort classes. So that could happen as well. Yes? If you take the ACT and you still have a chance to go to the FYE classes? You would have to already be in, enrolled in the FYE before you got your scores back. So you would have to ask for me, you would have to request to be put in FYE while waiting on those scores. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Yes. Okay, so back to grades and, and you know, being able to see the grades. Um, I'm taking classes at ECT, mm -hmm. and some of my teachers don't have the toggle set where you can see your progress grades, you know, like how you're doing in the class. Are their teachers, is it kind of like, standard where they have to have it toggled so you can see what your grade is through the course. Because the ones that teach in our building, yes. Okay. We have a great relationship with them, easy communication. Once they're over there, it's a little, it's, it is, but again, most of those professors have been really good about, oh, I didn't know that was off, or, right. and, and so it's just a matter of communicating, and so sometimes it's like I can send an email to that professor, I'm like, hey, can you turn this, this on so they can see? Or can you help me? I mean, there is one professor over there we deal with right now in the biology department that his grades are different. And so we, I sit down with students sometimes weekly and we mathematically figure up what their grade is because it's not there. And so we, we just, we do it. But, um, and we've just learned that that's him. So, yeah. yes. Reading Coyote 20. Okay, thank you. Yes. If they already took the TABE, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know when they switched. Cause like I said, I just found out from the assessment center today that they switched to AccuPlacer. So I, let, me, let me find out. So if, if they already have a TABE score coming in and they've had some dual credit, then maybe then that they're good. Based on that tape score, yeah. Let me. Yeah. Sure. Let me let me check. I would assume I'm 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 assuming at this point that he's good, because I would nothing would have drew me in to go back and ask that again. I'll be honest. I wouldn't 
I would have just already had them on an accepted list and moved forward. So let me just ask and find out. So, yes, sir. So when they get to ACT, how long does it take the students to get the scores back so we can send them to you? Uh, it's usually two weeks. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so much faster than they've ever been. About two weeks now. Yep. Yes. I have a few questions. Okay. First one is, um, when we take this summer class, then we're going to be notified before we pay for it, and everything is going to be on a remind. Yes, ma'am. And he's going to get his schedule. Uh, you all are going to work with him on the schedule. He's coming in personally to do that. Or that's another one of those remind things. It'll come on remind. Okay. Yeah. The, the initial part for the schedule, they won't necessarily need to come in. They'll just they'll they'll get a remind with a Google form that they'll fill out and they'll tell us what they want as far as it'll be are you do you want multiple English classes this year such as 101 and 102 do you want multiple math classes this year such as 150 and 155 or statistics which so science do you want? Are be spring and fall when we the first all the decisions will be based on the fall first. Okay. That'll be the first decision that they'll make about the fall and so but if they want to be more math focused and he wants multiple math classes this year, then we must put him in math in the fall. Right. If he wants more of an English focus, and he wants English 101, then he has to have English in the fall. So we, so some of those questions, and then whenever else he has psychology, those don't necessarily, he doesn't get to decide that necessarily. Because so. we do four, because that's a full time? You'll do four? five classes in the fall and five in the, five in the fall or five in the spring, and, and then four will be the opposite. So, because you have FYE is one, uh -huh. so then one of the two semesters you need four, and the other semester you need five, so that you have ten over the year between summer, fall, and spring. Okay. Does that makes sense. It's yeah, a little it's a little complicated. That's why I didn't really kind of go into it because I was like, what? Hold on, five? What four? What? So you take the one in the summer. That's three college credit hours. So let's say in the fall you do four. So after the fall semester you've got fifteen. And then the spring, you're going to take five, so you get your other 15. The goal is that you maintain 15, in a sense, per semester, so you can get to the 60 for the associate's degree. Okay. So it's, it's kind of 15 to finish is what a lot of people call it. Because that's a total of 60? 60 is the associate's degree. Yes. Uh, at 11.45, if they're finished and lunch is at 12, then how do you eat lunch if the bus is here to pick you up to take you back to... Bus comes at 1240. 1240. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I didn't give that part. <laughs> um, I got you. 11.45, done with classes, lunch at 12. Then the bus comes at 1240 to take them back for fourth and fifth period if they're going back. And then the, the new come. So. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. That's it. All right. Yes. Oh. I, I just wanted to clarify something. Uh, so you mentioned the main classes that are scheduled, like the math and the English mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, but then the additional classes that are required, is that something that we schedule ourselves on that doc you mentioned when that comes through? You, the only, you'll tell us about English and math and your science, and everything else we plan for you. Okay. Yeah. So the additional ones that are... Yeah, for, this, for the fall and the spring, we'll help you plan all of those. There will be some room at times for you to pick the one. Like there may be, if, if you only end up with three and you need one more, and we need to put like a a nutrition or criminal justice or something like that, then we'll help you. You'll get to tell us what you want and we'll add it. But uh, yeah, you get some say so. I don't want to sit there and say you don't get, you get some say so during your junior year. It's this time during your junior year when you get a lot of say so in planning for the fall of your senior year. Okay. Yeah, They just did that. Lauren and her team were just here doing scheduling with them and their, their minds are blown a little bit because you then have to start making a lot of decisions about where you think you want to go to school and then trying to match up what that degree program looks like, and then starting to pick classes for your senior year that help you to get to that degree major. Yeah. So that's where they're, it gets a little more complicated. And we have a lot of very personal conversations about the classes for students. And so this is, this is the fast track. I, I tell people this all the time. It's the fast track a little bit because you are making faster decisions about potential careers. And so, and parents, I'll just tell you, again, in my house, I have a good example. My daughter was nursing all the way through and graduated high school and went to WKU and got accepted to nursing school and then changed her mind after the first semester there. And so she's accounting, same, same thing. So, but she didn't lose any time. I mean, and this is the big thing I tell students, 
because everything you're taking during these two years are what we call gen ed classes. You're 60 hours following. Now, you may get to explore here or there, and that may not help you, but you're not losing any time ever. So, yes? Yeah, so what I would do first, what I would do, North Arden, yeah. contact Mr. Kraft, and let's do your coyote there first. Okay. Let's try that one. So if all you need is math, then let's take your coyote algebra with Mr. Kraft, figure out a good time to take it, take it there. If something happens and you don't get it there, then we pursue the next one, which would be is to apply for summer, get that ID number, then use that ID number with a photo ID and a, go to ECTC to take a placement exam. If we need to do it after that, then we'll, we'll cross that bridge. But yeah, we can still sign up for FYE and we can sign you up before the June if we're still waiting on a test. We can get you signed up for FYE because you're like, ultimately, I still want it. I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to get there eventually. We can get you into that program regardless of being accepted into this program. They don't, they're not changing their cost rate or anything because of us. It's just the way it is. But she can do some coyote testing at her high school. Yes, Mr. Kraft, Mrs. Cobb, and uh, Ms. Wooden will all give it to them at least once there. Okay. So, and mo I'll be honest, most of the people that go in to take it, you know, if you're doing well in your, your Algebra 2 class right now, you're probably going to be able to go in. Because that's the good thing about the coyote algebra versus the ACT math. It's just algebra. So most students typically do better just on that, whereas the ACT has trig and algebra and geometry and so on. So can I take that test for reading, right? He doesn't offer the reading. Okay, that's what I need. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So you need to apply to ECTC for the summer. <laughs> now get that KCTS ID number, contact ECTC, set up an appointment to go take that. In the meantime, before you go, I would try to find some some reading stuff to tune up on. Okay. Cert. You have your cert test, yeah. the reading portion on that, work on some of that, study stuff there. So, then go. Yeah, sorry. 